Amanda Farias, and last name is F like Frank, A-R-I-A-S, like Sam. Uh, and I am the New York City Council member for District 18. Super, <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal. And, and for that role, what, is, what does that entail? What, what does it mean to be a council member? Yeah, so a city council member basically represents a, a community district um, in a borough. Um, the Bronx has nine council members, so I'm one of nine people. Um, we represent about 165, 180,000 people, depending on the district. Um, and we get to do all things city related. So everything from filling a pothole to bringing an after school program into a local public school uh, to writing bills that actually change our laws um, all the way to voting on the 98 billion dollar budget for new york city wow yeah that, that's super impressive um i'm sure that that's a lot of work i can't imagine uh, a day <laughs> in the life to do so much but definitely uh thank you for, for all of the work you've done for the community um how long have you been um working in this field how long have you been doing this kind of work well, I've been in and out of government and politics for a, a bit over a decade now. I started working um, like in local organizing and local campaigns in my college days. So when I was like 19, 20, um, I'm 32 now. So it's been been some time before uh, I actually got to jump into an elected role. But um, I also worked at City Hall for about five years um, before I ended up running for office. Um, so I have quite quite a bit of experience. That, that's amazing. Any any particular uh, struggles or successes related to your role in all of these years that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I think being a young person in politics or running for office is has always been really difficult. Um, this field is pretty dominated by older adults, by folks that have had long careers. Um, so definitely being a young person um, in this field has been a challenge. Um, I also think being a young woman of color uh, mm -hmm. has been a challenge in, in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, it was difficult to fundraise and it's, I think, sometimes difficult to be the only woman in a room. Um, what's amazing now is I'm actually um, a part of the largest female bodied uh, city council in our entire New York history. So we have um, over 30 of us um, in the council, which out of 51 seats is majority. Um, wow. And so that's pretty monumental. Awesome. And then I think, yeah, success wise is like being able to see things you're working on or projects you're doing come into fruition in the community that are impacting people day to day is really like what keeps me in this work and what drives mm -hmm. me to do it. Um, it's just being able to take advantage of opportunities myself and then actually recreate them or bring them back to the community. Absolutely. That awesome. I mean, uh, definitely speaking from experience, uh, born and raised in the Bronx is uh, the communities can be a bit rough uh, at times, but yeah. uh, everyone sticks together. So to have you doing uh, this kind of work in this kind of, in, in that community, um, it means a lot to me personally, and I, I know it definitely means a lot to the people from the Bronx uh, to have uh, someone like you that's representing um, our people over there. So thank you so much for that. Um, for sure. And to speak in more on what we do, since we're big uh, into video games over here for CBI Esports, uh, thinking back to your past uh, growing up, is there any games uh, in particular for you that stuck out that you really like to play? Yeah, you know, this was a hard one for me because I really had to narrow down something that I really loved playing. I was like a PlayStation person growing up. So Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, like that, those are my games, you know? Man. Um, but Pokemon transcends time, apparently. Like Pokemon, it lives forever. So I'd have to say probably those were like my games. Listen, Growing I'm right up, there with okay. you. Listen, that, th those franchises transcend time, and you you speaking yeah. to me directly and, and to some of my absolute <laughs> favorites there, so I'm totally with you. Uh, any Anything special about those games or, like, any particular memories that you can think of and play of anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think Pokemon particularly, what I've been able to see is I have two younger brothers. So I have a, br a brother that's 23 and a brother that's 12. And I think 
growing up, I've been able to stay connected to them, at least in that aspect of um, them also being interested in those games. And I mean, the fact that my 12 year old brother and I get to like connect on those things and I know things or can relate to the game <laughs> um, really is something special, I think. And um, it just shows me that we can connect families and communities mm -hmm. and friends like, you know, through through gaming, through um, that quality time you get to spend or finding a thing that resonates with one another. Like that's really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I could totally uh, resonate with you there. Around what time do you think like grade wise do you think you was most active? Because I know now, especially like your schedule must be so crazy. Maybe <laughs> nowadays you don't get as much time. So what do you think was like a period where you played the most? I mean, I'm, I probably played the most between like middle school and high school or like, yeah, like elementary middle school is probably the most gaming time that I've had. I will say sometimes I fall into these rabbit holes and I got very into Fortnite when it first came out. Um, I like strategic games. I like, uh, like survival games like Fortnite. So, mm -hmm. you know, anything that's like fast paced, action packed, like that kind of stuff I'm into. So sometimes I do end up like playing a game and it helps to have brothers that are doing it. I mean, don't ask me like K to D ratio, like that's terrible and not that great, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I play and I have fun doing it. But probably when I was younger, I had the most time. Sometimes though, as an adult, I still find time to do it. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, definitely, uh, if ever you get a break, it's a good way to wind down at least yeah. from being so busy. So definitely uh, try to get more, fit more time in just for, for your own sanity. So you don't go crazy. Yeah. If that or, that, at all. or that K to D ratio, helping that right. get better. That might be, that's, <laughs> no, that could hey, listen, be. <laughs> uh, we, we have, we have all the time in the world to work on that. <laughs> um, speaking of talking more about games and, and thinking about esports since esports is so big. I mean, it's monumental. It's, it's such a, it's one of the leading growing uh, industries in today's market. Um, last year, the esports market was valued at uh, over uh, $1 billion USD, and it is projected to grow in the next 10 years, especially with uh, companies wanting to get into this metaverse, NFTs, and kind of things like that. So how do you feel about uh, people seeking more uh, careers in gaming and content creation. Uh, how does that make you feel as the esports industry may grow? Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I really love graphic design. Um, growing up, like I wasn't musically inclined, but I was artistically inclined. And that's really where I found an outlet to. And I think a lot of careers in gaming and content creation are great. Like we need to get better at connecting like everyday activities or learning to those types of jobs. Um, so getting better at like computer science, art direction, or animation can help lead right into some of these careers and these fields. Um, so anytime I speak to students, I'm like, the first thing is when you're learning coding basics in computer class or like the color wheel in art class, it's really critical to being able to make the connection of bridging the gap to some of these careers for our young people. Um, and I think it's important that anyone will has the ability to pursue their own pathway and a career that they enjoy, right? You wanna be able to like not work a day in your life because you're enjoying mm -hmm. your work so much. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing booming in a lot of these different um, sectors or industries, I think it's critical in investing in young people, you know, while we can in making those like real life connections and opportunities. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing how we can talk about cryptocurrency or talk about, coding and gaming and how they connect mm -hmm. um, and making that in real time and real life connections for people to see that there's you don't get stuck in computer science at coding there's a branch of different titles and careers that you can go into after you learn that very basic thing mm -hmm. um, or how to apply the science or the math to the coding to building out an animation to a game right like what what i think we need to be better at at least particularly for me in government is being able to make all of those connections real because we have to take advantage of um, the careers that are going to stay and continue to grow while 
we still have the opportunity to catch up for our young people. Right. Right. Totally. I mean, I, I think, I think that's everything you said is like super spot on. Um, especially now with us going into schools and running this program, I think it's also important for us to uh, be a part of that uh, process of bridging the gap and kind of educating uh, uh, students and, and adults alike that kind of say, hey, um, I know this is an esports thing and it's so focused on gaming, but we also want to promote uh, different career pathways that could lead into job opportunities in the space, like, you know, journalism, uh, getting media, uh, um, um, graphic design, all of the stuff that you touched on uh, will definitely lead into a lot of uh, great job opportunities and definitely expand the market, especially for people who just don't want to pick up the controller. So uh, I'm 100% with you on that. I definitely resonate with it. And I think yeah. you're totally spot on. And I think too, and I'm, thank you for bringing up journalism, like sometimes we forget about these other aspects of these fields. Like you can like now we're having massive tournaments where people show up in person teams show up 1v1 mm -hmm. like all of these different opportunities that while many parents probably won't like me saying this like our kids are spending so much time at home getting so good at these games but there's also ways that they can participate and mo get monetary gain by winning competitions um so it's a really interesting field that i think we do need to pay a little bit more mind to. And I, I also like want to encourage a lot of people to say like, you know, I believe in a college and career model for young people. I don't necessarily think that every single individual needs to go to college or complete college to, to um, go, you know, be successful in our communities. There are people from a variety of backgrounds that have a variety of expertise and talent um, and potential. And like, we just have to find the right way to tap into that mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they can actually utilize all of their great skills. So sometimes it's also about taking these um, like esports or taking coding or whatever and really applying it to our classrooms so we can make parents feel good about mm -hmm. what their students are interested in and doing and that there's careers out there, um, not just jobs, like real careers where folks can grow in um, and also grabbing our students' attention, which in school is sometimes difficult to do. Right, yeah, totally. I mean, that that's, that, that's exactly how we feel. Uh, I think that's why we're so passionate about what we do and it's, and it's amazing to have a council member like you that kind of feels this way and hopefully we get more like-minded people to definitely push this forward and i mean and thinking about that too is like if you could look back do you think that your school would have benefited from an in-house esports program i mean would it also being exposed to things like that when you were in school do you think it may have changed the course of your career maybe i mean i what i when I first thought about this, um, or even any time I think about like coding, and in high school, we were using basic coding to set up our MySpace pages. And I know I'm very dating myself hey. right now, <laughs> talking about MySpace, but you know, in high school, we were basically using coding to set up MySpace pages to make them look nicer or put up different types of um, stickers and things like that. Mm -hmm. So having a program like this could have made those connections to those careers um, for me and maybe would have made me more interested in them. Um, so I think, you know, more is always more, right? Mm -hmm. Like having the most options for our students means we're providing necessary resources for kids that actually deserve them and will help them find a real passion. Like right. the point of the point of going through our education system, the point of doing um, out, outside after school activities is to really find where we're investing that time, our passion, our interests um, to, to be able to in, enjoy our time in our community or find a way to to live through that passion, you know, as we grow up. Um, and if that passion is for esports, then we have to make it accessible. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think any school of mine could definitely have benefited growing up. Um, I think we would have been ahead of the trend <laughs> and probably in a better position for a lot of folks. But I think whatever we can do to make these real life connections and to get young people into careers earlier um, is important. So yeah, I definitely think schools would have, at least growing up, in-house East, East right. programs would have been beneficial. Right. I mean, it's like 
even looking now and like uh, we'll go in and it's like what we're doing with you guys i totally wish i had an opportunity uh, like that when i was in these grades um so it definitely feels good to hear another opinion that feels like that and i wish that yeah. we can put this kind of into more hands of more schools just so they're definitely more aware and and you know we can hopefully continue to grow this business and uh students will definitely find more of a love than just picking up the controller and make real connections and find a real great uh, career path for them. Yeah, that, you know, I also, I grew up playing ball. Like I played basketball mm -hmm. my whole life and I never could get into 2K. Like it was never enough. Like it, Like I could never make that connection. But I also think there's a realm of like people that are generally interested or passionate about sports can see the game they play or the game they watch um, actually be connected in, into a gaming system that they can be invested in right. or like a team that they could build out and be invested in. So I just think, you know, you know, anything that we can do to make our passions connected to our careers, um, connected to real opportunities is just super important for young people and even for adults in our communities. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, I, I definitely feel that. I, that's a that's a great point. Um, and I think that that would definitely lead a lot more uh, successful stories in the business if, if we have more uh, like minds and kind of have everybody on the same page with that. Um, especially when it's like there's so many leading careers and, and people have this idea of uh, wanting to become a doctor and, and wanting to do all of these things, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah. definitely pursue those dreams and goals but it's great to hear that there's other uh, uh, niches that that people can find and, and have a great career uh, a long lasting and, and find longevity in the space so uh, that's what we do it for and I'm, I'm glad that you're here and you have the same kind of ideas yeah. and mentality that <laughs> we have so it's, it's it just works out for you. So thank you. of course uh and that's honestly pretty much it. I don't have anything okay. else for you. Uh, you've been super awesome, super phenomenal. Like, Thank super, you. Uh, once again, we from CIE Sports, everyone here definitely want to congratulate you uh, on your seat where you are. Uh, being a council member is super awesome. Uh, and we definitely want to continue to uh, push you up and, and make sure that you have so much more success uh, with what you do and thank you so much for everything that yeah. you've done for us it's much appreciated of course. and thank you for having me this was great of course of course uh anything else uh you'd like to say maybe to our viewers leave them with a little piece of advice um stick to your passions it's super important to make sure that you know what makes you excited every single day or brings out even a little bit of a healthy competitive side, you wanna invest in that. And so sticking to your passions is really important. Um, and just do good out there, you know? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Couldn't have said anything better myself. So thank you so much, uh, council member. You've been, again, wonderful. And thank you so thank much you. for your time. Really appreciate yes. it. Yes, have a good rest of your day. You too.